Well, a Happy New Year to everybody and welcome to our worship on the 3rd of January 2021. Let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, as we go into this new year, we pray that we may know you with us in every part of the year that lies ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, great are you services at times. So today, in place where we would normally have a prayer of confession, we're going to have this covenant renewal of our own, uh, based on the service that's in the Common Worship Times and Seasons book. 
God made a covenant with the people of Israel, calling them to be a holy nation, chosen to bear witness to his steadfast love by finding delight in the law. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ our Lord, in his life, work, death and resurrection. In him all people may be set free from sin and its power and united in love and obedience. In this covenant, God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us, to renew the covenant which bound them and binds us to God. Let us then seek forgiveness for the sins by which we have denied God's claim upon us. God of mercy, Hear us as we confess our sins. For the sin that has made us slow to learn from Christ, reluctant to follow him and afraid to bear the cross, Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has caused the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayers, our neglect of fellowship and the means of grace, and our hesitating witness for Christ, Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has led us to misuse your gifts, evade our responsibilities, and fail to be good stewards of your creation, Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has made us unwilling to overcome evil with good, tolerant of injustice, quick to condemn, and selfish in sharing your love with others, Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. Have mercy, mercy on, on me, me, O God, in your great goodness. goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences, wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. Make in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious spirit. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved in Christ, let us again claim for ourselves this covenant which God has made with his people and take upon us the yoke of Christ. This means that we are content that he appoint us our place and work and that he himself be our reward. Christ has many services to be done, some are easy Others are difficult. Some bring honour and others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Eternal God, in your faithful and enduring love, you call us to share in your gracious covenant in Jesus Christ. In obedience, we hear and accept your commands. In love, we seek to do your perfect will. With joy, we offer ourselves anew to you. We are no longer our own, but yours. I am, I am no, no longer, longer my own, own but, yours. but yours. Your, your will, will, not, not mine, be done in all things, wherever, wherever you may place me, in all that I do and in all that I may endure. When there is work for me, and when there is none, 
when I am troubled, and when I am at peace. Your will be done when I am valued, and when I am disregarded, when I find fulfillment, and when I find it is lacking, when I have all things, and when I have nothing. I willingly offer you all that I have and am to serve you as and where you choose. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. Let this covenant, now made on earth, be fulfilled in heaven. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 2 and reading verses 1 to 12. The Visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, of incense, and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When you open the Bible right at the beginning and find the account of creation, it seems that God's concern is the whole world. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God has at his concern everything. So we then get the creation of the heavens and the earth, the whole lot. And as we move on, we may then find ourselves a little surprised that the focus has narrowed somewhat, narrowed onto just the people of Israel, the chosen people. But all the way through the Bible, there is an understanding that certain people are chosen, that they might be means for God reaching out to the whole world. That starting point we have in Genesis 1 isn't lost later on. It isn't just there and parked and then we move on. God is always concerned with the whole world and all the inhabitants within it. When we get to Genesis chapter 12 and the focus in on Abraham and the family who are going to become the chosen race, the chosen people, there is an understanding of what they're called for. God is calling them in order that they might be his means of reaching the world and bringing blessing to the whole of the world. He is there as part of God's overall plan, not a narrowing down, but a means of reaching everyone. 
in the book of Deuteronomy, there is an understanding that the people, if they will follow through the law and do it faithfully, will be able to embody what it means to be a people who are favoured by God. And this will then draw the attention of others. And the others will come and learn about what God has for them as well. It's explicit there in the text. So even at that point where detailed laws are being given to the chosen people, the chosen race, at the same time there is a concern for the whole world. In the book of Isaiah that comes through. It comes through early on in one of those readings that we get at Christmas time. And let me read it again. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9 verses 1 and 2. There will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future he will honour Galilee of the Gentiles. Galilee of the Gentiles. Looking way beyond the chosen race. Making sure that while they are uh, at the centre of his concern, they're not the limit of God's concern, not by a long way. In the second half of Isaiah, there are some very interesting things that show how God is concerned to reach out as widely as possible. Here is a little bit from Isaiah chapter 42. This is what God the Lord says. He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open the eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison. Do you see again that concern about creation and that concern about all peoples. The calling of God's servant in Isaiah is not a narrow calling. It's a calling for the whole of the world. And that's something that we're celebrating on this Epiphany. We've moved the Feast of the Epiphany to the nearest Sunday. So January the 6th has become for us what we're celebrating on the 3rd of January. The showing outwards the showing of God's glory outwards. And it's symbolised by the visit of these Magi. Magi were known in the Roman world. Sometime shortly before the writing of the Gospel of Matthew, some Magi had turned up in Rome. They were quite a spectacle. People turned out to see them. Their clothes were distinctive. There weren't many visitors from that part of the world coming to Rome itself. But the Magi had long before that come and visited Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? Magi have come from the east, from Persia, the land we now know as Iran. They were significant people, not kings, but priests of the religion of Iran. They were able to look beyond the confines of their religion and sense that something else was breaking in, something they needed to explore and investigate. And so they travelled, and it is quite a distance that they are travelling, in order to seek out the one who is to be born King of the Jews. King of the Jews, but of significance for them, thousands of miles away, people of a very different race, people with quite different interests, but still wanting to know about the King of the Jews. We have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. The Magi come in order to worship. Jesus. And when they arrive, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, 
and they bowed down and they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And then they made their way back to their homes, went back and we may wonder what they made of it all in the years that followed. T.S. Eliot in his Journey of the Magi sits with them and wonders with them what it was that they saw, what it was that they experienced. The Gospel itself moves on and we're quickly into John the Baptist and then the baptism of Jesus and the ministry of Jesus. And what about what it was all about for Jesus and for the Gospel story? Here we have that opening clue that the Gospel is about good news for all the world, not just for one group of people, not just renewal for them. There are a few further signs within the Gospel. It comes out in the story of the Canaanite woman who comes to Jesus and pleads with him. And there he says that he's come particularly for the Jewish people. But his blessing reaches, his healing reaches the Canaanite woman's child. And then right at the end of the Gospel there's the command to go to all nations. Go to all nations and bring baptism and the news of God to them. Baptising people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The good news is always for all people. And we have particular reason to be grateful for that because it could have been that good news just stopped short, was there in the promised land but no further. But no, that wasn't what God's plan was. It was never God's plan. God's plan was always to reach out and include people like us as well, to make sure that we too had a chance to hear and follow the good news. And it gives us particular responsibility as well. Because when we see that God has given us particular things, and we've got this pattern that's here throughout the scriptures, then we know that God has given us particular things that we in our turn might be ready to share them in our world. So yes, we do want to look to God bringing us blessings. We do want to look to the way we can come before him particularly in prayer. But always we're doing that with a view to inviting others to do likewise and knowing that actually God is at work in us hoping that other people will see what is happening and want it for themselves. We need to be open and ready to share good news with all. Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, at this dawn of a new year, we are gathered together to worship and listen. Listen for your voice calling us to something new. In the wake of Advent, Christmas and the turn of the new year, some of us are still hopeful and full of expectation, but some of us are weary and worn. Some of us are overwhelmed and anxious, but as sure as the sun rises, a new year is upon us, full of possibilities, full of promise. You are a God of newness and change. And you call us to be continually transformed. In this season of resolve, help us to be mindful and intentional about our priorities. Help us to look to Jesus as our way. Help us to rely on the Spirit to follow in our faith and in our doubt. Teach us to set our hearts first on you and to discover the fulfilment you long to give to us in both this life and the next. Help us to live not just in the context of this brief span that you have given here on earth, but in the light of your eternal promise, which is available to all who are invited through your grace. Inspire us with a vision of the world as it could be, 
a world closer to your intentions and desires. A world of abundance and plenty. A world of peace and security. A world of cooperation and prosperity. A world of health and well-being. A world of love and of justice. In some ways, it is easy at the beginning of a new year to be idealistic and zealous, to be bold in our dreams and our res resolutions. So God, we ask that you help us to be patient and disciplined, persistent and ready throughout the entire year. May we not too quickly fall back into familiar habits and patterns. May we not lose hope or vision. May we be your kingdom people each and every day of this new year. God, even as we hope and dream of a better world, even as we make plans to be better people, we are mindful of the realities that face us right now. So we ask for healing and wholeness for all those who are sick. We seek comfort for those who are grieving we pray for companionship for those who are lonely. We need jobs and homes and food for those that are without them. We long for peace in places of war. We desire justice for those who are oppressed. We want reconciliation for those who are estranged. And God, we are confident that you will walk with us as we strive to meet these needs. We are confident that you will walk with us always. Your presence among us is abiding and real. Your love fills our lives and guides our paths. So help us God to not put Christmas away too quickly, to enjoy the fullness of the season and to be transformed by the Spirit of Christ in our midst. Amen. And so we come to our Eucharistic prayer together. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving Spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks because by the Holy Spirit you lead us into all truth and give us power to proclaim your gospel to the nations and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and, went and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, 
drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and his glorious ascension, and we look for the coming of your kingdom with this bread and this cup, making a memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and, and honour and, honor and glory, glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So let us draw near with faith and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for us and his blood which he shed for us. Let us eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most, Most merciful, merciful Lord, your love compels us to come, come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. body of Christ to keep you in eternal life. you in eternal life. Amen.
And as we come to the end of today's worship, let's finish with a prayer of blessing for the Epiphany. May God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. May God the Son, who turned water into wine at the wedding feast of Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. May God the Holy Spirit, who came upon the beloved Son at his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out his gifts upon you, who have come to the waters of new birth. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. We have come to Christ, the living water. Let us go into 2021 in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.